Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and today we're going to be talking about the Adeptus Mechanicus. Now, before, I didn't really like these guys because they looked all steampunk and I'm not into that, but after hearing and researching their lore, I am pumped. These guys are pretty badass. So sit back, relax, and let's listen to 40 Facts About the Adeptus Mechanicus. The Adeptus Mechanicus is a distinct organization within the Imperium of Man that does not share the practices and beliefs of the Imperial Cult and is a playable race within the Warhammer 40k game. The Adeptus Mechanicus is the name given to the Cult of the Machine by the Adeptus Terra. In the past, they were called the Mechanicum. The Adeptus Mechanicus acknowledges the Emperor of Mankind as the ruler of the Imperium, but not the religious truth of the Imperial cult. They follow their own dark and mysterious cult, and worship the deity called the Machine God. They believe the Emperor is the living embodiment of the Machine God, and is the supreme object of worship of mankind. The Adeptus Mechanicus also regards organic flesh as weak and view the removal and replacement of biological tissue with mechanical bionic parts as sacred. The elder tech priests are more machine than man, giving up most of their organic parts for biotics. The Adeptus Mechanicus is based on Mars, the very first forge world of the Imperium, and they are the sole rulers of the Red Planet. They provide the technical and scientific experts of the Imperium and field armies of massive Titans, Mechanicus Electro Priests, Skatari, and Combat Servitors. The official language of the Adeptus Mechanicus is Lingua Technis. The Mechanicum of Mars, from which the Adeptus Mechanicus comes from, predates the Imperium of Man. The organization was integrated into the Imperium of Man by the Treaty of Mars, known as the Treaty of Olympus Mons to the Mechanicum. This treaty was signed 10,000 years before the present day at the dawn of the Emperor's Great Crusade. The treaty gave the Adeptus Mechanicum an unparalleled degree of rights compared to other organizations. The tech priests were given immunity to the dictates of the aesthetic imperial truth and to allow the Mechanicus to continue to exercise sovereignty over the Forge Worlds it had settled across the galaxy during the Age of Strife. In return, the Mechanicus agreed to aid in the construction of the massive fleets and the provisions of the technical aid necessary for the Imperium of Man to launch the Great Crusade. The Adeptus Mechanicus is vitally important to humanity because the Imperium has a very limited scientific knowledge of how its technology actually functions. The Imperium does not exist without the Adeptus Mechanicus. The lack of knowledge has only reinforced the prevailing Imperial view that the buildings and use of advanced machinery is almost a magical or religious act, fraught with rituals and invaluable instructions. Mars was colonized very early in human history, long before the start of even the Dark Age of Technology, and developed a society different from Terra, both culturally and in terms of technological advancements. The arid, rusty surface of Mars was terraformed, and under a man-made oxygen-nitrogen atmosphere, the Martian colonies flourished, though it remained politically independent from Terra. When the era of human interstellar colonization began, both Terra and Mars served as co-equal mother worlds of countless new human colonies across the galaxy. During the Dark Age of Technology, the two empires of Terra and Mars coexisted under the government of the decentralized human interstellar government of the era, to the mutual benefit of both. At the height of its splendor, and even later in the chaotic Age of Strife, Mars dispatched hundreds of colony fleets into the void to colonize new forge worlds in the name of the Machine God, and built on them a likeliness of the great manufactorums and temples of their distant homeworld. 
Some of these new forge worlds also forge new empires for the Mechanicus, among them the feudal knight worlds, and added their unique combat walkers, the knights, to the Mechanicus own powerful arsenal. The onset of the Age of Strife brought an end to the glory and peace of the ancient interstellar human domain. Civil war engulfed thousands of human worlds, even the twin human worlds of Terra and Mars. Many warring factions vied for power on Mars and waged a brutal civil conflict using arcane and unimaginable destructive weaponry including psychic abilities. The carefully constructed atmosphere of Mars was burned away, and once more the rusty surface of the planet was exposed to the deadly radiation of the sun, the terraformed Martian environment which had teemed with Terran life for centuries was rendered a barren crimson desert once again. Much of the Martian population retreated underground as any who were not equipped with the radiation and life support suits could no longer survive on the red planet's harsh surface. In time, one faction emerged dominant over all the others that had contended for dominion over Mars, the cult of the machine god, the Mechanicum. The cult Mechanicum established its rule over the Red Planet and erected massive new manufacturums and hive cities across the world, divided into different city-states known as forges or forge cities. Each forge world was ruled by a high-ranking tech priest, and the entirety of the Mechanicus hierarchy bowed to the highest priest known as the Fabricator General. Mars made war upon the divided techno-barbarian states that ruled Terra at the time, as many of these ignorant savages had access to advanced technologies left over from the age of technology, but they did not understand or know how to venerate properly. After the Emperor's victory in the Unification Wars on Terra, the Emperor of Mankind came to Mars and landed atop the great volcano of Olympus Mons. At their first sight of the Master of Mankind, many tech priests were overcome with the feeling that they had met the living embodiment of the Omniscia, the Machine God, clad in human form. The treaty we spoke about before settled that the Mechanicum built Imperial Starships at Mars's Ring of Iron Orbital Fleet Yard and provide all the war material necessary for the Emperor's Great Crusade. The Mechanicum agreed to be bound by the Emperor's commandment to never develop certain forbidden technologies such as artificial intelligence. Though the Mechanicum had no knowledge of it, it was artificial intelligence that had nearly destroyed humanity once before during the rebellion of the Men of Iron in the Dark Age of Technology, and the Emperor was determined not to repeat history. A minority of tech Adepts believe that the Emperor was not the Omniscia, for the machine god that the Mechanicum had always worshipped actually lay sleeping deep beneath the crust of Mars in the Noctis Liberanthius. They did not agree with the treaty. These tech priests argued at the end of Mars' political independence and hated that the Emperor would restrict the tech priests of the Mechanicum from researching and developing certain sciences. This separation would lead to Mars' siding with Horus in the Horus Heresy. These traitor units initiated a civil war on the Red Planet known as the Schism of Mars that mirrored the largest conflict raging across the galaxy. The Fabricator General himself sided with the War Master, but his deputy, the Fabricator Locum Cain, remained loyal to the Emperor. Horus swayed the Fabricator General of the time, Kalbor Hal, to his side of chaos by promising him a complete STC database from the planet of Draconis 311, and brought the senior tech adept over to his side with other STCs recovered from the imperial conquest of the Artanian technocracy. Horus promised many other things in terms of technological knowledge to the Mechanicum, including the right to develop technologies like artificial intelligence, 
previously forbidden by the Emperor in the Treaty of Mars. Of course, this was all in return for their allegiance in his cause. Many master adepts like Kelbor Howe longed to pursue these restricted lines of research and had long believed that the Emperor was not the Machine God, for the true Machine God dwelled in the Noctis Labyrinthium deep beneath the crust of Mars. That this legendary creature may actually have been the Catan Shard known as the Void Dragon is a disturbing possibility. The Adeptus Mechanicus, with its inherent understanding of the machine spirit and the machine god, has a near monopoly on STC designs, standard template constructs, and other advanced imperial technological knowledge. As a result, the Mechanicus wields a tremendous amount of power in the Imperium as the primary manufacturer, maintainer, and repairer of everything from basic farm equipment to interstellar warships. And those were 40 facts about the Adeptus Mechanicus. Of course, we left off with them being traitors to the Emperor, but this will continue. So click on the link for part two. If part two isn't out yet, just chill, subscribe to the channel, watch other awesome videos that we have. We put out lore Warhammer 40k videos every single week. So please subscribe, guys. And for all you subscribers out there, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for liking, sharing, and all that jazz. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate, signing out.